Okay, let's talk about chapter 19 here. We'll talk about uh, celestial distances. So we'll talk about the fundamental un units of distance, um, some general properties of the stars, how variable stars are used to determine the distances to stars uh, or galaxies, and then how the HR diagram can be used uh, to determine distances to things. So um, the metric system is the fundamental system of uh, units uh, that everybody agrees to when doing scientific things. Um, the meter was originally defined as one ten millionth of the distance from uh, the equator to the uh, North Pole, and now we've redefined it to be uh, in terms of the speed of light. So um, the distance that light travels in one two hundred ninety nine millionth seven hundred ninety two thousand four hundred fifty eight point sixth of a second um, is the distance of one meter. Um, so one light second then the distance light travels in one second is about 300 million meters, which means it's pretty fast. So uh, things like the kilogram, the second, the meter, the liter even, all of these things are defined and um, in terms of uh, absolute units, natural units, in terms of physical constants that the universe has, um, and that allows scientists to make very precise measurements in these units. Okay, so then within the solar system, uh, Kepler and Copernicus could know the relative distances to the planet. So you had the sun, then you knew Mercury, R Mercury was this far away, and Venus was, let's say, twice as far, and Earth was three times as far away. But we didn't know exactly how many meters it was, just that Venus was twice as far, and Earth was three times as far, and Mars was four times as far, and so on. So we would need to some, some actual numbers to figure out the true distances that the planets were. So here's Venus transiting across the sun, and that means that Venus, this little black shadow here, um, as it orbited the sun from our perspective, it blocked out the sun and moved across it like that. And so by measuring the time it took from various positions along the Earth and some geometry, you can figure out uh, how far away uh, Venus must be in order uh, for that to work, and that was the first direct measurement of the distances of our solar system, and that was how we were able to determine early on the distances to all the planets in real units, not uh, relative units. Um, nowadays, we just send a radar signal out from our radar um, antenna to a planet, and then when it reflects and comes back, we know that the speed of light uh, times the time it takes, right times time equals distance. So the velocity of light out and back, the time it takes, tells us how far away the trip was or how long the trip was. Um, Let's see, okay, so um, in stars, or in space, <laughs> we um, use something called parallax to determine the distances to stars. Um, on Earth, it's called surveying and triangulation, and it allows you to create a little triangle here. This is why it's called triangulation, because um, if you remember any math class, right triangles are the most important thing. A right triangle is a triangle that has a right angle in it, 90 degree angle here. This is called the hypotenuse, okay, hypotenuses. Um, and then if this is one angle, that's another angle. For this angle over here, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side, and that's the hypotenuse. For this angle over here, that's the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side, if you remember from uh, geometry class. So those are really important things. Um, the triangle is the most important thing in a lot of things in life, actually, um, and it's no different for parallax. So stellar parallax is a way to measure the distance to stars. So this diagram is painful uh, to try to understand, um, so don't feel bad if it doesn't make sense, because it doesn't make sense. Um, so what it's showing is that Earth is here at point B. Six months later, Earth orbits the sun and is at point eight, okay? point A, and Earth will keep doing that. And while it's doing that, if this star here is close, then from the perspective on A versus B, okay, the position of the star will appear to move against the background stars and oscillate back and forth over six months. And so the way this looks is here. So you've got Earth orbiting the sun, you've got a nearby star, um, in the sort of middle of the image, and then is dancing along the background stars. And if you look on the top right, um, you can see how the nearby star appears to be moving 
against the very far away background stars. This is very similar to when you're driving down the highway and the stuff next to you appears to be moving really fast, but if you look at the mountains in the distance, they don't look like they're moving very much. So the further away an object is, the less it's going to appear to move due to your motion, but this is a direct way to measure the distance to a star. So in this example, Earth's going around the sun and we're taking a picture of the sky and some of the stars are appearing to move. The ones that move the most are closest to us. The ones that move the, le the least are far furthest away from us. So if you look at this image and uh, so there's the nearby star um, right here. And then here we are six months later, there it is. So this star is going to appear to be here. And then six months later, it's going to appear to move uh, across the sky. And so here it is six months and then six months later, there it is again. Okay, so it's going to, um, it's going to move from here to here and it's going to bounce back and forth over every six months. So this angle here is called the parallax angle. And if we cut this in half so that this distance is one AU and there's our 90 degree angle and then this angle right here, theta, that's called the parallax angle. And so then 1AU is the opposite side. The distance is the adjacent side. And if you remember uh, tangent of theta, so toa, toa, tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side, 1AU, divided by the adjacent side. And the adjacent side of this triangle happens to represent the real distance in real space. Remember, sine and cosine and tangent are just the ratios of the lengths of the sides if you make this triangle longer, um, the angle stays the same, uh, but the sides just get longer in proportion to each other. So sines and cosines tangents are just ratios of the sides. So in this case, um, if you can measure the angle, then you can measure um, how far away the star is. So this is the only direct way to measure exactly the distance to nearby stars is with stellar parallax. And what you're actually measuring is this angle, which is the distance um, as you move around six months, um, this overall angle, this apparent shift in the, the star's position, that angle is the same as this angle. Okay, so these two angles are the same. And so that's what you're trying to measure when we're talking about uh, the parallax or stellar parallax. It's that effect. Uh, okay, there we go. And, uh, okay, so um, the unit is the parsec. Um, so the unit for distance is called the parsec. It's about three light years, uh, 3.26 light years. Um, so there is no star that is one parsec away because the closest star is over four light years away. Um, but just by definition, the parsec ends up being 3.26 light years away. Um, it is the, uh, one of the units we use is arc seconds for angles and, uh, the distance to, um, something that would have a parallax angle of, of, uh, one arc second is defined as one parsec. So this side of the triangle is one AU, and then this angle, if we made it one arc second um, in uh, size, then the distance would correspond to uh, one parsec. So then one uh, parsec is equal to one AU over one arc second. Okay, and so um, that is the uh, uh, unit there. Okay, so uh, continuing on, love this picture. Orion, there's Betelgeuse, there's Rigel. Betelgeuse is a nice red star. Rigel's a nice blue star. Okay, but these all these stars are different, you know, distances away. From. Okay, so the nearest star are you know four light years, ten light years away, twelve light years away, somewhere in there. Um, and this is uh, the HR diagram of stars taken from the Gaia mission and the Hipparchus mission. So these two satellites have been uh, or measured uh, um, parallaxes of the stars as they made their orbits. And then based on their parallaxes, we get their distances and then we plot their luminosity versus their spectral type. And again, you see that nice main sequence curve and uh, uh, stars moving off the main sequence going into red giant land. Um, and uh, so there's still some stars young stars being born up here that haven't died yet. You got a few white dwarfs down here. Um, these are 16,000 stars in our neighborhood, um, not super far away because um, the Hipparchos satellite and Gaia um, 
uh, well, Gaia now can measure pretty far, but uh, Hipparchus could only go um, about 300 light years, 500 parsecs or so. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, variable stars are, there's two types of stars called Cepheid stars, uh, variable stars, and RR Lyrae variable stars. And these are pulsating stars, which means if you look at their magnitude versus time, their brightness dims and brightens and dims and brightens at a very regular interval, do, 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 like a beating heart. And it turns out that the um, time of their, uh, of their oscillation, so for example, this one starts at three days and it goes back again um, at nine days. So that means there's a six, six day period here. Nine days plus six would be about 15. So it's about a six-day period. Um, that time, six days, corresponds to the luminosity of the star. Um, so remember, that means the luminosity or the brightness of the star. If you're here, um, that star is going to be pretty bright. If you're here, that star is going to be pretty dim, only because you're moving away from it. So based on your distance, you can calculate the app the apparent magnitude, the real luminosity, and your distance. Those are all related to each other. So if you can get the true luminosity of a star, then you can use its apparent luminosity to figure out how far away it is based on how dim it is. So these two types of variable stars allow us to tell, um, I don't know if we have a plot here, they allow us to tell, here you go, so the brightness of the star and the period are completely related. Okay, nice line here. So that means all we have to do is measure the period. If we know the period, then we automatically know the luminosity. So if I find it's a 10-day period star, then that star is going to be a thousand times brighter than the sun. And then if I know it's a thousand times brighter than the sun, but it only looks like a, a six-magnitude star, I can figure out how far away it is in order for that to be the case. So um, Cepheid variable stars and RR Lyrae variable stars, they're associated, their period is associated with their brightness. And uh, that means all we have to do is measure this light curve. And this light curve is, uh, is really easy to measure. You just point a telescope at it, and you just watch it uh, and measure its heartbeat. Okay, so um, that's called the period luminosity relation. So that's a, that was a big discovery. That was a big deal. Okay, so um, and uh, um, so that was... Uh, Henrietta Swan Levitt, she did a very good job trying to figure all this stuff out. Okay, um, so, blah de blah de blah So there's two types, the Cepheid and the RR Lyrae's. So the Cepheid stars, variable stars, are going to have longer periods, and they're going to be brighter. The RR Lyrae stars are going to be a uh, shorter period, less than a day, and also not as bright. So these stars you can't use for very, very distant um measurements, very, very far star galaxies. Cepheid variables, since they get so bright, 10,000 times the brightness of the sun, you can use them to probe very far distances. Um, okay, so then uh, it turns out the HR diagram, then um, you can get the luminosity of the stars by plotting them on the uh, HR diagram. So if uh, you find a star with this spectral class, um, type F, and you can tell that it's on the main sequence, then you can tell what its brightness must be just from looking at its uh, spectral type and getting some other things, um, other properties of it. So depending on the measurements you have, um, you can get the actual luminosity of a star uh, just by figuring out a couple other properties and getting it on the HR diagram, and then you can pull off its luminosity from there and then figure out how far these uh, stars must be. Okay, and so there's the luminosity classes um, that... Uh, correspond to basically the uh, different brightness levels of the stars here. Okay, so, um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, yeah, there's something called the distance ladder, uh, cosmic distance ladder, because we can use parallax only to about the center of the galaxy. Uh, beyond that, we can't make any measurements of how far stars away. They're just too far away, and their parallax angle is just so small they do not appear to move um, from our perspective. Uh, these variable stars, remember they're not as bright, uh, can get us to uh, 
the globular clusters outside of our galaxy, um, to our halo, uh, to some neighboring galaxies, to some dwarf galaxies, um, but not to, let's say, Andromeda, for example. Um, HR diagrams, they can get us out a million light years or so, and then Cepheid variable uh, stars get us out to um, 60 million light years, which allows us to get pretty far into uh, space based on that. If we want to go further than that, we have to use some other standard candles um, that we'll talk about uh, next time. Okay, so in summary, uh, there are fundamental units of distance, for example, the meter. It's defined in terms of fundamental constants of nature, um, and uh, we use um, something called parallax to measure the distances to stars, which is another word is triangulation, um, and it's the uh, uh, new definition for a new dis distance is the parsec, um, and one parsec is about three light years, and three light years um, corresponds to something that would have a parallax angle of one arc second. Okay, so um, the closest star, Proxima Centauri, is over one parsec, parsec away because it's four some light years. Okay, and then variable stars, there's two types of variable stars whose brightness is related to their uh, pulsation rate. So if we measure their pulsation rate, which is easy, we can get their actual brightness. And then from there, we can figure out how far away it is based on its apparent uh, magnitude and compensating for its true luminosity over that distance. Okay, and then um, the HR diagram can be used. We can plot things on them and help us figure out uh, the luminosity of a star. And then again, we can figure out its distance based on its apparent brightness. Okay, talk to you guys later.